Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everyone, I'm going to be continuing my thoughts or reviews on the Netflix Marvel shows. And today I'm going to be talking about Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones is the second series after Daredevil. And in my opinion, Pound for Pound is the best show Netflix has put out. It could be the best comic book series for me. Although, trying to be critically, I could say things like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with five solid seasons with 22 episodes. They might not have the subject matter and the impact that these three seasons had at 13 episodes. But it's in the it's in the ballpark of an absolute favorite comic book adaption. So there'll be no spoilers, no major plot reveals, just my surface thoughts and feelings about three seasons that came out so it stars Christian Ritter as Jessica Jones Mike Coulter as Luke Cage Rachel Taylor as Patricia Walker or Patsy you got Carrie Ann Moss uh, she played Trinity in the Matrix movies and she's great in this and she kind of like Rosaria Dawson kind of filters through some of the shows I won't give too much away, but Carrie Moss is a person who does fly around and kind of visit the other shows in a sense. And then we have David Tennant as Kilgrave. In the comic books, is the Purple Man. Now, in my opinion, the best Marvel villain ever portrayed is David Tennant as Kilgrave. The first season is amazing. The subject matter. The... Character growth. It is such an amazing piece, in my opinion. You don't have super costumes and displays of superpowers that go crazy. It is down-to-earth, gritty, and it touches on subjects that are just heartbreaking. Whereas season two of Daredevil is, reaches that little kid in me and brings out the comic book, makes it come to life for me. In an action figure type way. Jessica Jones is. uh, Perfection in writing. The cast is spot on. I won't be able to say enough good things about Jessica Jones' three seasons. And unlike Daredevil. These three seasons are all solid. They're all amazing for me. The first season, you're almost thrown into things a little bit, but it's done very well. They handle flashbacks amazingly. You see this private investigator, Jessica Jones, trying to make a living, get through life, and it's very relatable. I don't want to give a lot away, but it goes into subject matter that's very serious. It's awesome to see displayed on TV in such a high quality they paid attention to details to the side characters the cast that's just on the periphery of things it all works her attitude as the actress i don't know how she is in in real life but she plays jessica jones spot on i am familiar with the character being created in the comics i would say um Familiar up to like 2010, 2012 when I dropped out of the comics. And I know a lot about her history. The supposed past she has that's hinted at the show was, oh, I tried to be a superhero. You know, now I'm just a private investigator. Everything works well in a, as it comes together during the season. And you find out things about her. You find out things about Kilgrave, the Purple Man. Luke Cage is introduced, and the chemistry is awesome to watch. Uh, as someone familiar with the comic books, I know a little bit more. I'm not going to give it away here, but the relationships are very deep in the comics, and it leads to other things. I don't know if the shows will eventually go there, but 
now that I'm doing the podcast, we know Netflix no longer has them. Disney made their deal with Fox and all those things, so I don't know what's going to happen with their Disney Channel. Rumors are they're canceling all the contracts, but we'll see what happens. Jessica Jones, the first season. The villain portrayed has never been topped in any movie so far I've watched. Maybe it lends better to 13 episodes, nearly an hour each. And he's not even in the first four. I don't even think he's in the first four episodes. There are hints of him. Uh, It's just done so well. And when he shows up, Marvel villains are turned on their head. It's it's an amazing thing to watch. You're riveted. I was pulled in every episode. Now, Netflix has its own formula, its own pattern. And I think they try to keep that tone in all the shows. You'll find certain sections of the season on a uh, where the tone shifts. Some people might call it a, um, a negative, that there's a couple episodes that they use to explain things. There's a lot of exposition and characters talking, not a lot of action. That's fine. Jessica Jones doesn't need it. The weight of the emotions, the portrayal of the characters, uh, heartfelt, comes through on both sides. Even the villain, who's d- portrayed incredibly, it just all works so well. In my opinion, season one of Jessica Jones might be the best, sing- single best comic book TV season ever. The end of it is an obvious lead in. Daredevil was doing good. You knew we were getting a season two. I watched season two and it works so well going from one thing to another. What are the, what is the cost of season one to someone who is already self-destructive, uh, um, you know, relying on liquor and drinking and just uh, in a downward spiral, so to speak. They up the game and they make the stakes even higher. I was so intrigued how season two was progressing, not understanding what was going on in a good way. A lot of times I try to think three steps ahead of the show and fill in the way my brain works when I write my own stories, my own scripts and stuff. I try to see where it's going to be plotted. Season two is a great way of throwing a little bit of surprise in there. Keeping the tone, the characters stay the same. The growth is there, and the side characters become more important in a natural way. I won't say the plot of the villain, because I think it's a little bit of a spoiler and a reveal. But it's just heartbreaking again at the end. It's so emotional. It really hits you where it hurts in a good way. It's done so well. The third season, I was worried about. You had just come off watching season three of Daredevil. And if you've listened to my podcast on that, I am very disappointed in season three. And as the other shows progressed, they were up to maybe season twos. And I've said this before, I enjoy all the shows. Some more than others. Defenders was real fun. Jessica Jones in that doesn't have the pivotal moments that, let's say, Daredevil would have. But going into season three, I had a worry. It was the first time I worried about what Netflix was going to do with the show. I had come from such a bad situation with Daredevil season three. And... I remember sending a message to my friend. Like, oh, yes, the stink of Daredevil Season 3 has not affected Jessica Jones. It is awesome, and I loved it. Great character portrayals again. The growth of the character, the seemingly endless spiral, and the 
true strength of character. It almost seems like there's a couple of role reversals and twists that are done really good. The characters who have grown with us are given chances to fit in organically. And I think that's difficult with a lot of shows. You get the side characters, maybe they get popular to a certain extent. They try to give them more, but it seems to take away from the main character. They just plotted this out beautifully. Season 3, coming off of Season 2, and you're wondering like how much more is Jessica Jones going to take. You see the limits, you see the exasperation, and you feel it. The writers do such a good job, whoever the showrunners are, the acting, the cast... Even the characters that seem to be reminded that they're there. It's just so well done. So that's why I think now that they're all over. And I think they have their place in a hierarchy. Like I said, Jessica Jones is going to be clearly Netflix's best show for me. Daredevil. Punisher. Uh, just a slightly ahead because I do enjoy Luke Cage and Iron Fist. None of them are a disappointment to me. None of them make me regret having to watch them again. And The Defenders is amazing. So um, I enjoy everything except for that Daredevil Season 3, which just gets to me. I thoroughly recommend Jessica Jones. If you haven't seen it, watch it. You might want to Take a couple of breaths, three to five seconds into your nose, five to eight seconds out through your mouth. It will deal with subject matter, um, issues dealing with women. The villain is um, unapologetically evil, but done in a way where he doesn't believe he's evil. It's just such a good, good character study. It's just... And his presence looms. I don't want to give it away. My recommendation is to watch Jessica Jones as soon as possible. It can't be too hard to watch now. Although I'm not sure if Netflix is cutting from, or Marvel cutting from Netflix has anything to do with their rotation. But Jessica Jones is just too good to not promote. Even movies... I'd watch a Defenders movie. I'd go see it. She's so good in it. Her character seems to be a linchpin, but not made the central character. It's just a good way to do comic characters in a grounded way that people are going to relate to. And it's never done better than Jessica Jones, in my opinion. Iron Fist might be a little more out there with the supernatural. Um... Luke Cage, uh, I would say, since he spins off from Jessica Jones, still holds a little bit of that, um, you know, that uh, feel from Jessica Jones, and they turn it into his own. And they do that very well, in my opinion, also. The displays of superpowers, I'm impressed that they, rather than cheat it out and go for a bed cinematics, they find real interesting ways to show displays of strength. Long leaps and jumps and things like that. And not overdone. And they're done real good way. Some of the shows use a little bit more than others. And that would be probably Iron Fist. Maybe to a certain extent, Luke Cage. And when you factor in the Defenders being so good, I think Netflix is... Shows from Marvel are a huge success. I'm still interested in looking at season three of Daredevil to see where that kind of fits in with critics. Because I kind of stayed away from that stuff. And David Tennant, wow. Kilgrave, the purple man. His presence just stays with the show. It's done so well. I've had people who don't even like comic book adaptions or comic books in general uh, more impressed with Jessica Jones than let's say a daredevil 
or even for that fact, maybe even a Punisher, which kind of lend more to a costume look. And Jessica Jones just has a jeans and a leather jacket. I think someone refers to as a Joan Jet wannabe of some sort. I just love the show. Three seasons of awesomeness, never a letdown. Yes, a little bit of nitpicks here and there. They might have to do with characters, not like any character, but I think in the ultimate long run, when you have three seasons of a character growth and their side characters, I should have expected a little bit more of the turn it on their head type thing. So I'm really surprised at some things and that makes it more likable to me. Watch Jessica Jones. It is my favorite of the Netflix shows. And I think in the long run, it will have a big, it will have had a big impact on shows and hopefully movies in the sense that you have subject matter, but you don't see portrayed a lot. And it doesn't feel forced that it's, oh, it's a woman and they use it to their advantage. It's done cleverly. Uh, to put in the undertones of the show where unlike some other things you might see people come on uh, certain reviews of movies and there's, there's an agenda that is, is obvious in the beginning maybe it's there my bias um her portrayals in the comics are an interesting thing i don't want to get too much into it in case there's something in the future and i i, I like where they went with it Comparing it to Alias is what the comic that first started and her investigation uh, place is called Alias Investigations. Just so much good to say. Watch it. I uh, will see everybody next time. Hope everybody had a good holiday. Happy New Year's. I'll see you all soon.